It's a painstaking process. A couple inches of sawdust, a lot of dirt filled from the campground, then a special mix of dirt and finally some Bluff City, Tennessee clay from just up the river. When they're done, it's a half mile track, the likes of which Bristol has scarcely seen. The world's fastest asphalt half mile becomes this multi-banking dirt track to thrill fans with the NASCAR Cup Series. Hey, I know that face. <laughs> wow. Look at that grandstand, and look who has come down from the grandstand Woo. to join us. Daryl Waltrip is here with, uh, with Clint Boyer and me to help you through a Bristol weekend, the likes of which you've never seen. No, I haven't, Mike. I, you know, I went on asphalt, I went on concrete. I've never raced on dirt. And I walked around there today with Clint, and we, you know, what, they had a Packard out there. I said, no, it's a Packer. Sorry. Not a Packer? Not a, yeah, it's a Packer. <laughs> it's a Packer. Anyway, yeah, that Packer yeah, out there. A, I no, said, my no, grandfather no. had a Packer. But anyway, we, uh, we went around the track, and uh, I think they've got it right this time. I think the clay they've added and the dirt they're used, I think it's going to be a good race. Well, the trucks have had fun, and, of course, they've been racing here for two weeks, Clint, <laughs> trying to get the, not just to get the track in shape, but to give everybody an idea of what to expect. So what do we expect? <laughs> well, I think we expect the great excitement that we had last year. Nonetheless, yes. hey, it was not a knock last year. For the first stab at that thing, I'm telling you, they knocked it out of the park. We knew there was going to be obstacles, you know, that were going to be unforeseen. There was the dust and things like that. Fix that correction with the night race. Under the lights, the dust won't be a problem. Then you have the progressive banking in home hopes and attempt to try to get these guys racing in a groove a little bit higher than they did last year. All right, we'll see how it plays out. Uh, beginning trackside with Regan Smith. Well, Mike, truck practice just finishing up a moment ago. A number of the cup drivers actually on the haulers watching that practice, seeing what they could learn, one of which, Chase Briscoe. Chase, you were watching the racetrack there. What do you think from what you've seen so far? Yeah, it's definitely uh... sure, it's so It'll be interesting to see kind of what that difference is tomorrow night in the heat races. But, yeah, it's definitely slick. Um, you know, they watered it there, so it should be decent for the first five five minutes probably. Uh, and then after that, it'll probably be pretty wore out. So kind of similar to probably what we'll have tomorrow night at the end or Sunday night at the end of the race and uh, see what this highpoint.com for can do. A lot of speed on the dirt tracks, Mike. Look for Chase to be good when it comes time tomorrow. Thanks, Regan. Uh, the Packer cars are out there. And Daryl, I guess if you're going to go to the racetrack and get dirty, you might as well sell some detergent. I guess so, and I sure hope Hammond ain't working on it. <laughs> NASCAR has a rich history of racing on dirt. In fact, in the early years of NASCAR, the only paved tracks were Darlington and the back straightaway at Daytona, which was Route A1A. Everything else was like this. I wasn't in that race. I'm going to make it perfectly clear. <laughs> Took my joke from me already. <laughs> you got to be quick. <laughs> One thing I've noticed right there, you can see them going over what we call the dirtles, those white blocks on the bottom of the racetrack, not near as big, not near as significant as they were last year. Think maybe somebody gets below that, huh? And as in the truck practice, no, that is not the concrete that is underneath this surface. Uh, that would be several feet down. Seven. It's seven feet. I think seven and a half feet in, uh, down in, in the middle of the track right there. D dirt's really deep. Joey Logano was last year's winner at Bristol. And frankly, that surprised everyone, perhaps including him. It did me. I, I didn't see that coming. But uh, doesn't I, surprise me that he took off right off the bat with a fast car. Obviously, running that truck practice, doing so, enabled him to have a feel for this racetrack right off the bat, getting to the top of the board. Again, Larson, the same thing, ran a dirt late model race. I had a little fun with him last night going to the top. Now we're seeing our dirt boys. Christopher Bell jumps to the top. Hamlin. Reddick. Reddick. They like it. I think they like it, Mikey. Well, that's that experience, Daryl. You know how it is. You get to a racetrack, there's so many unknowns. You get guys out there with dirt track experience and background in general with the Christopher Bell, Kyle Larson, Tyler Reddick, that, that, those guys in that conversation. And then you have Logano, the other guys that are trying to gain that experience uh, running the truck series and, and getting that practice. Alex oh, Bowman around. Bowman around in turn four. 
Now, one thing that is a big difference here is that this is a brand new car. Yep. For 2022. Uh, on the outside, but whatever you need to do here, I got room above you. And one of the biggest differences is that 18 inch diameter wheel up from 15 previously. Low profile dirt tri tires. How about it, Regan? Mike, they are completely different than a year ago and completely different than what the trucks are going to run tomorrow afternoon. You see this tire, a very wide tire patch right here, a narrow profile. The tire does not have nearly as much space between the wheel and the tread on the tire. A couple of the guys telling me earlier today, this reminds them a lot more of a sprint car tire. And you can see it's pretty gummy right here. A little movement out of these little rubber patches when you go to grab them. So this is where the grip's going to come from, other than obviously what happens with the racetrack in terms of the moisture. Here's what happened. Alex Bowman up oh, already around there trying to get back to the gas in turn four. No help. He did it all by himself. I guess he just a little loose. They all look loose though. Now in turn two, beginning with truck practice, drivers are trying to open up not just a second groove, uh, but a whole second lane out there in turn two. Boy, Larson just went between the nine and the two. I mean, he shot between them, and uh, he's on it right now. That, that, that five car is going somewhere. Look how high he's running there. Yeah, he likes it. You want to talk about a, you know, a fish out of water, Austin Sindrick, the guy that he just blew <laughs> the doors off of. I mean, there's a kid that came from a you know an asphalt background on road courses, road racing, and things like that. Watch Cal watch watch go for this. Watch this. He I'm says, done following. I'll just go See right to here, a little opening. Flip side of that conversation, though, if you're Austin Sendrick, I don't mind that a bit. I want to follow that guy, see what he's doing, see how much speed that I can do, gauge that, go to work. He probably wishes he could follow him because <laughs> Larson is, uh, you know, he's pretty quick right now. He's fifth quick on the board, and his car looks really, really racy. Justin Haley, you see him on the top of the board. Another guy ran a modified here a couple weeks ago on the dirt at this very racetrack. Now they did water the track and do a little packing between the truck practice and uh, this 50 minute session. The first of two this afternoon on FS1. The one thing that that will do, obviously you see that's a preferred groove, if a uh, cushion, if you will, where that's rolled in. And you heard Chase Briscoe say that that's gonna dry out in about five minutes or so. And that's what you're starting to see. The one thing that that will do though, guys, is widen this racing surface out, widen that groove out. They'll yeah. move back down to the bottom but there'll be a groove out there when this thing cleans up and it gets that black, not rubber down yet, but blows off and gets cleaned up. You'll have a wider, a much wider racing surface. All right. What's he doing? Got to turn right to go left. You know, it's funny that you say that and we all, you know, watched uh, the movie and know where that came from. Yeah. But to be fast here, you better not be turning too much right. You're going to be abusing that right rear tire on a long run. You're going to burn the right rear tire off of the thing. You need to keep this thing pretty straight, pretty young, you know, balanced, if you will, with all four corners of this race car when it's dry slick like this. Riding with Bubba Wallace. Clint, most of these cars are running much higher than what we saw in truck practice. Yeah. Well, that's because they, they watered that outside, yeah. you know, and built a little bit of a cushion. Like I was saying, this is going to dry out. But when it does, you're going to have a wider racing surface altogether. This is a good move. Clint, I, I, I could probably go around here without turning right if I didn't go very fast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't get me wrong. You're slipping and sliding around. You're going to have to turn right. But yeah. you, you know what I'm saying. You, uh, you no, don't want to burn agree. that right rear off. I think that right rear tire is going to it's going to be a, a something we got to keep an eye on. I think you'll have to keep an eye on it already in practice. Right here. All the teams see Kyle Busch coming in already for an adjustment. These guys are wanting to see their tires. Kyle Busch top of the board. Justin Haley Ty Dillon uh, with a lot of dirt track experience. This went to third and Christopher Bell. David Gilliland rounds out the top five. Clear by half 38 out of line at the bottom. There's Inside Gilliland. Way low. But you see that guys. Gilliland, excuse me. A little so. splash of water, not much at all. What was he out there? Maybe a minute tops. Look how drastically different of a line that, that that created just that fast. That's what I've always loved about dirt racing. You don't like him guys on the bottom? Hang on a minute. I'll fix it. <laughs> <laughs> Got something for you. <laughs> There's Ty Dillon hanging the tail end out a bit. Tell you, a car that looks really fast. I don't know if he is or not, but that 24 car, William Byron, he, uh oh, got one around. That'd be Chase Elliott here in the front straightaway. Whoops. Uh, he also had a spin in truck practice earlier. Just feeling it out. Get his, you know, he's 
Seeing where that limit is. See where the limit is. How do you know where the limit is? Got to go. That right there. It's the only way. See what happened to him. He's coming off turn four. Oh, I think he. Oh, yeah, you got a little started high. To push and it was getting high. Grabbed a handful of throttle to keep it out of the wall, spun it out. No harm, no foul, though. Great job keeping it out of both walls. We're back under green with Kyle Bush, fastest. Chase Briscoe has gone to the top of the chart. 20.055, 89.7 miles per hour on his 19th of 23 laps. Uh -oh. And he's got a flat left rear. Going to bring it uh, pit side. Where Regan's going to show us about some of the changes that have been made for these cars. Well, Mike, there is, and there's a number of different opinions out here on what to do with the grills on the front of the race cars. There you see Tyler Reddick's grill on the screen right now. That grill completely flat, but what it has is an outerwear on the front of the car. That outerwear used to keep the dirt from collecting and the mud from collecting up on there. A number of guys ran that set up right there last year. But if we go over here to the left and we show the 20 car, Christopher Bell, you can see that there is a gap in between where his outerwear is in front of the grill and the nose of the race car, a different opinion. That allows air, even if that gets kicked up with mud, to still be able to get into that, into that nose and that car still be able to breathe and do what it has to do to keep the temperatures down. A lot of thought process out in here on a different number of different things on these race cars. All right, Clint, which of those do you like? That one? Yeah, I like De that one. Definitely the one on the Gibbs car, sure. a Christopher Bell. I like that the fact that even if it plugs up, that air can get around that. It's, I think it's just almost self-explanatory. Now, if it gets massively caked up, neither one of them are going to work. <laughs> All right, here's Chase Briscoe on the flat left rear. Blue tire. No warning out. Kind of look up. Is it a left side? Definitely left rear. Hmm. Hmm. And looking at that tire as he's rolling it away, it's that outside shoulder. It, it looks like, well, you can see how the rim's been yeah. riding on the yeah. side while it's kind of tore it up. But it could have been anything. Some rocks. Daryl, you and I walked this way. The rocks. first thing that you said and brought up is the rocks. And yeah. Certainly can play havoc on those tires. But that's what happens when you're the fastest, Mike. Yeah. Your left rear goes down. Well, hey, and air pressure could have played a role in that. Could have, yeah. Too low on air. Could have. To have that much grip on a dry, stick track like this, I would think you would want that air pressure down as low as you can possibly get it. Maybe found the limit. Well, the 11 car is almost, he almost bit the dust. Well, that dust comment, what you said, we reheard him talk about it. Chase Briscoe made the comment. Five minutes is about all you're going to get out of that little splash of water, and you're going to have dust. The last time he was out there, had a lot of grip out there, liked what he felt, goes out this lap, and yeah. it was way, yeah, I call it fluff. You get in that fluff, and you're along for the ride, just like you said. Yeah, Levin went in the corner really hard into turn one, and it just washed out with him, and he was headed for the wall. <laughs> there it is. Whoa. That is too high. Bring it I'm in. coming in for an adjustment. Coming in. I don't know if that adjustment's my underpants or, or <laughs> leopard wedge adjustment, but nonetheless, I'm coming in, fellas. It's a combination. <laughs> now, Danny finished third in this race last year. Yeah, he did. And was fast right off the truck. It tells me he was felt comfortable. Ricky Stenhouse has the ninth quickest lap. It came on his ninth of 18 laps so far. Going down turn one here. Let's see what he looks like. Whoa. Another guy that was really fast last year. In a second. Huh. Car looks stable right there. You know, the track's almost starting to get a little bit patchy. You can see, you know, tacky and then it kind of gets dry slick and then picks up a, a tacky again. He's very consistent. Tyler Reddick in turn two, which is where dri drivers seem to be doing the most experimenting. He took it right to the wall. Watch this. He got that baby sideways. <laughs> Jumped the cushion. Oh, See, right doing? there, just the least little bit, got up too high, gets in that fluff, and that thing wants to come around in a hurry. Yeah, turn one turn one and two seem to be a little bit more problematic than three and four. They don't seem to have quite that problem, although we've had a couple of cars spin off turn four. Turn one and two seem to be a little harder for and these guys. Right in the middle of the racetrack, too, right in the middle of one and two. Seems like it's gripped up, makes you feel good. I can get a little bit faster in there and then blow through it. Was that a slide job? That was a slide <laughs> job. <laughs> hey, you keep this groove high like this, you're going to see slide jobs all <laughs> night long Sunday. 
Let's get a little more insight on tires, Regan. Well, Mike, a moment ago, we showed you the tire that is on the cup car right now. This is actually the tire that is on the trucks for this weekend. The same tire is what was on the cup car last weekend. And now you can see how different the profile is. This tire, very, very round right here. It is a bias ply. You've got a lot more tire between the wheel and the tread of the tire. And even where the tread is, that's round as well. Clint, I'm not a dirt guy. I know which one I would prefer on pavement. I would want that radial tire on pavement all day long. What would you want as a dirt guy? Which one's going to work better? Why? Well, you have a lot more options with that bias by tire that you're showing right there. That being said, this car, we can't run that. You can see on the cup car, you see the blocks is one thing. But the other thing you see is how flat this is right here. You see the contact patch in which that runs way flatter than you have in the other. I love this shoulder right there as well. And there's the truck tire for comparison, which is on a 15 inch five lug wheel. You're wearing me out with these tires. Man, it's because they're important, buddy. They take are. care of those tires, they'll take care of you. 35 minutes to go. New name at the top of the chart Tyler Reddick Ooh. is fastest. Love this camera view right here. For the simple fact that this groove just keeps getting higher and higher, particularly in one and two and off of two, man, it is getting pretty high up close to the wall, and you're going to be able to see it with this view right here on Ross Chastain. They now have a third lane worked in up top in turn number two, way up oh, above. Oh, oh, oh. Told you. Told yeah. you. It. it was only a matter of time. Yeah. That groove was getting too high. Somebody's going to jump that cushion, and there's no insurance program. You get higher than that, and you're in the fluff, and way's gone. And Denny Hamlin was that someone. Sorry about that, guys. I, I saw him go on the wall, and it, I didn't know where we were, so I forgot where. <laughs> I was going to, but then I thought, you know, well, they'll get it. <laughs> it's all good. Hey, it was Denny Hamlin, guys. Denny Hamlin got into the wall. Pretty good contact there, too, Daryl. He hit it pretty hard. He did. Skinned up the wrap on the right side. Well, he was flirting with it in the last go round. He went in, they worked on a little bit. He went back out, and that time he hit it. I Look at the toe link. Damage. Toe link's uh, either bent, probably bent or broke on the right rear. You can see that thing towed out. Those things aren't very big. Here's the 11 team. Busted toe link at least. I couldn't see dust so bad. No idea where it was. Yeah, except for pushing the track up like that higher and higher. It's going to be really tough on everybody. Well, we'll show it to you in the distance here. You want me to talk about it now? Sure. How about now? The white it's the white car, Daryl. He's up there now. He so, went he went in, he got sideways getting in, they just went up and smacked the wall. That toe link is probably the least strongest part of that rear suspension and it bends or breaks so something important doesn't because yeah. they can easily replace that. At Richmond, uh, Larry McReynolds told us uh, NASCAR introduced a new stronger tow link that is optional for the teams to run. Yeah, uh, but it's they're, still they're going the weakest to link. They're, they're going to it though because it is bigger and stronger. Welcome back to Bristol where it's just two days to the big day on dirt Easter Sunday evening on Fox pre race on FS1 then join us on Fox for the second year of Bristol on dirt for the NASCAR Cup Series. There's your most laps run. Let's find out what happened to Denny Hamlin Regan. Well Mike we caught this wall contact for Denny Hamlin Denny. Did it just jump the cushion or what took place? Couldn't see the corner. The dust was so bad that somebody was about 10 lengths in front of me and they're right up against the wall. So there was a ton of dust and I didn't even see where the corner was. So it just was late. Yes, to answer your question, I jumped the cushion. Thanks, Denny. Fortunately, no major damage. Now, here's Ross Chastain. Same topic. Once the moisture is pushed all the way to the wall. Yeah, and it's changing pretty quick. Yeah, the end of the front stretch is really dusting up. I, I can't see, uh, like you can't even see the track. I just blindly turn and hope I don't miss my mark. And I don't even have a mark. <laughs> and, and that's a plan? Yeah, yeah, I hope I don't miss my mark, but I don't have a mark. <laughs> that's weird. 
And Reddick almost spun out right in front of Austin Dillon. That's as close as it gets. You can see, just like anywhere with this race car, once that thing gets too far yawed out, too far sideways, it is gone. You better abort. Get your foot off that throttle. The Richard Childress Racing teammates going to school on one another here. Austin quicker that lap. Uh, and here's why. Caution again on the speedway. Turn two. Is that Chase Elliott again? I think yeah, it, it is. is. It is. So, boys, y'all got to tighten this thing up. Upper right of the picture. Let's take a look. And, you know, he should, he should, he should be pretty good on dirt. He has a lot of experience on dirt. Much like we saw Tyler Reddick just got sideways, and once it got too far, like I was saying, the rest is history. Did a good job keeping out of the wall again. Picked up a little throttle there, got it spun around out of harm's way. Now, right, you guys didn't trust me before when I told you. I'm going to tell you again. This thing is too loose. Too loose, yeah. Loose. One thing I think you're going to start seeing, that, that groove, you see moving up the racetrack more and more and more. Eventually, that's not going to be the fast way around. It's going to keep getting slicker and slicker up there. You see William Byron, two wins last weekend. Huge Martinsville weekend for William Byron, this 24 team. Yeah, he and Rudy, I'll tell you, they're working really, really well together. Just a great, great pairing. Well, that was a mugging that Hendrick Motorsports put on the field last week at Martinsville. What I was getting at, though, so the groove's going to keep moving up. It's going to start getting slick. You're going to see those guys jumping that cushion, so to speak, having trouble in that top. That bottom will get cleaned up, and it'll be the preferred line, much like the truck uh, practice got. Three distinct lines in turn two now, separated uh, by mounds of dirt <laughs> in between each of those three lanes. Yeah, I think, Mike, in this practice, you're just trying to figure out where do you want where do i want my car to work well i don't want to work low don't want to work high and and i think you'll come back in the next practice and have your car a little more dialed in maybe not an absolutely smooth surface not by any means i don't know you ever been on a dirt road Oh, sure. You know, you... Washboard and all that. Oh, yeah. That's what makes it fun, Mike. Car moves around, jumps around a little bit. Look at that car. Look at that. Tide. Need some cleaning up, Daryl. Yeah, baby. They probably spray some of that Tide on the racetrack before it's over with. Clean the back of it off. Look at that. Had some Tide with bleach in it. Got that right. He's going somewhere. Woo. Picked up that grip. See that? How that I was talking earlier. It's patchy out there. You hit a slick spot, gain some throttle, and you hook up with traction, throttle down again, and then hook another dry spot, and that's exactly what happens. Car wants to get out from underneath of you. A patchy race uh, racetrack is so hard to navigate. Now, you know, you look at that view there, looking through the windshield, that is pretty dusty looking. For sure. Listen to his throttle. Really liked how he's... You can hear, see how it gets sideways, completely out of the gas. Boy, he about got a roll. <laughs> up there, up there, up there. <sighs> now, let's, let's listen again. We're going to regroup here and try. Oh, we're going to go to the bottom. I didn't like it up there. Mm -hmm. Too close to the wall. The yeah. left rear drive is just putting me up there. I'm still tight, but I thought that run was actually okay. Too oh, much left rear drive, a little with... tight. When he picks up that throttle, runs him up the racetrack. He's 14th fastest. Jumped that cushion, did a good job. You can see it in his in-car, too. I was like, I don't know how close we are, Daryl, but we're way too high. Oh, my gosh. What a perfect timing to be riding along with him. And it's all turn one and two. I, there's something weird about getting into turn one. It messes up the whole corner. It's drier. There's that insurance program, and right? That cushion's not there that affords you that, that stability, the grip to be able to pull on that wheel and match the gas.
So do you want to be tight in and loose off? You want to be loose in and tight off? What are you, what are you looking you for? You want neutral. You need a neutral race car. You can't have that front end take off. Can't be too loose with the rear end. You have to have a, just a really perfect neutral, neutralized uh, setup for sure. Flip side of that, say it's raining. Say on the front side of a run and it's heavy. You need to be freer. A freer race car is going to be faster when that track's got grip in it like that. You're going to be tight if not. But when it gets dry slick, that's when it really is important to have a good neutral setup. 21 minutes to go in this first of two practice sessions for the cup cars. Eighteen and a half to go in this first of two practice sessions. You're riding with Ross Chastain, looking ahead at Kyle Busch. You know on the highway when somebody in front of you, they're not in the left lane, they're not where you're just going, come on, will you pick a lane? Well, that's Kyle Busch. He's run the top, he's run the bottom, he's run the middle. He's run part of each. He's been everywhere on this run. I, I, I think that's a good thing, though, for him because it, he's trying to figure out if I catch somebody, can I go by them on the inside, can I go by them on the outside, or do I knock them out of the way? <laughs> yes. <laughs> One or the other. Joey Logano has the best consecutive 15 laps. He uh, just took that mark away from Noah Gregson by about a tenth. A year and a half ago, Joey had no dirt experience at all. Uh, built a dirt track modified to go have some fun with during the offseason. And he had a lot of fun and evidently learned his lessons well. Yeah, that's a great point, and that's something that I think this race last year did for a lot of these guys in the Cup Series and all these different series that came here and run of NASCAR. They love dirt, you know, and they all went and bought late models. They bought uh, mini sprints for a run at Millbridge. They're running, like you said, a modified in Joey Logano. Justin Haley was here running a modified uh, just like he was down in Speed Weeks in Florida. I think they all kind of fell in love with the dirt racing aspect. Uh, you know, a lot of them did anyway. Yeah, I think Paul Wolf is a pretty sharp guy, pretty sharp crew chief. He and Logano, they seem to be able to hit it. You know, you think about winning at the Coliseum. He won the first race here on dirt last year. They seem to be a little bit ahead of the curve sometimes. Darrell, the way this groove is widened out in turns one and two, they're using more of the racetrack, I think, than you guys ever used in one race on asphalt. Top oh, no. to bottom. No, we fought for the bottom. And, and and that was really, that was when this track was fun. Because you'd run up on somebody, you know, and you'd bump them once and let them know you're there. You bump them twice, I'm coming through. And the third time, you're around and I'm gone. I learned that from Earnhardt, by the way. Hey, yeah. remember when we was arguing, doing that piece earlier, and you kept telling me he's going to be on the bottom, he's going to uh -huh. be on the bottom, he's going to uh -huh. be we think I'm so pumped that they're on the outside right now. <laughs> hey, it's only practice. <laughs> Brad Keselowski currently a 24th right here. New colors for him. A bottom feeder. I like it. And okay. I think that's just cleaning that track up. You get it. See, see some more running down there. Tyler Reddick's running on the bottom. They're going to get this cleaned up. Keep you an eye on lap times right here. We, I just ribbed on you a little bit about running on the bottom. Here they are on the bottom. And I'm telling you, it's time for the bottom to start coming in. One more. Okay. I like that. I like bottom feeders. I, I, it's the shortest way around the track. Plus, you can do a slide job on the guy. You get out and run in the corner a little hard, slide up in front of him, take his line away. I like a race track that has both options. You know. Every good dirt track has that the guy ripping the lip on the outside wide open running 50 mile an hour faster than the guy on the bottom. They come off the corner and they're door to door side by side. So Clint we've talked about drivers and their experience on dirt. How important is it from what you're talking about how this track is changing to have a spotter with a lot of dirt experience. Very good. Always, a spotter is always important and a good spotter is. It's not just inside outside and your you know situational awareness around you. It's watching the race car watching where other cars are gaining on you watching that stopwatch. Hey you know uh, Blaney right here in the 12 cars faster than you running right in the middle of the racetrack. Make that adjustment. Tyler Reddick has gone to the bottom of the track. After running the top for most of this practice. And he is the fastest. Okay, we're sitting here watching. The question is, 
Okay, I'm digging what I see. You see those guys on the outside? I'm picking up what you're putting down, starting to work the bottom. What are we going to see Sunday? It's a good question. I, it's a great question. It's I have a clue. It's, it's a great question, but we really don't know. You know who does? Mother Nature. It's the only one that, that you know, dictates what this track condition is going to be like. What be that left rear air pressure. Way low. Give me some water. Put some water on this thing. So how did we get here? Here are some early shots of today's NASCAR Cup stars. All digging in the dirt. Love it. Look at that. <laughs> Golly, how old was he there, I wonder? <laughs> Six or seven, looks to me like. Which is about three years younger than what he looks like now. <sighs> Harrison Burton. Mm. Looks looks a little unstable. Yeah, definitely needs. If I'm Harrison, I want to get behind one of these dirt regulars, follow them around this racetrack, and get a feel for this from a vantage point of the speed. Right? You need to get a good marker. You can do that by following somebody. Regan like the 12 car Ryan Blaney just came in after making a run notice something on the nose of his car while he was parked here in the garage area take a look at that that is why we talk about how they built these grills up and what they've done different that was a clump of dirt that hit the nose of that race car did that much damage right there the Penske car is running more of a wire mesh that protrudes out two inches from the front of the car with that outerwear wrapped across it whatever that was they're, they're glad that didn't go into the radiator area uh oh that right there just a big Clod. Mud clod. That's, yep. a, that's a dirt clod. It's a pretty big one. Cleaning that track up there, aren't That's Christopher Bell is who that was. And man, that was really high. I mean, it's it's organic. It's as if the track is alive. It keeps changing. I'm yeah. telling you, they get much higher than this. They're gonna need a roller ball on that right rear quarter <laughs> panel. Just set it up against there and let it eat. He's going to need a cooler on that steering box at the rate he's going. He is working that baby. And we have a caution. Austin Sindrick off turn. No, he's just rolling down the back straightaway. Uh, but oh, I Ross has seen. Ross. I like Ross Chastain. He is he is so on fire. I, I I love the way he races. Now earlier he was having uh, vision issues, and we're back to green with nine and a half to go. Denny Hamlin's got the uh, <laughs> got the goggles on. Yeah. We got our dirt goggles. Andy Jeffers got us a couple of sets uh, last year. Here's the on the racetrack. Still clear. Never touch the gas. Gosh. Was along wow. for the ride just, the whole corner. He got in there, the car got out from underneath of him. Never, you don't have anything else to do. You turn right, like you said, and if that doesn't fix it, you are in trouble. I mean, he just rode it out. He didn't, he didn't get back in the gas, he didn't do it, he just rode it out. Yeah, it's one thing if you're in the throttle up off the corner, right, and you're starting to feel that traction catch up, it doesn't start to get loose, you, you make the correction by taking your foot out of the gas. He didn't have that option. No, he just rode her out. Well, in about the last eight minutes, the fellows with a lot of dirt track experience have been the fastest, Larson, Bell, and Reddick, and Briscoe primarily. Really liking what I see out of last year's winner, Joey Logano. You know, you don't see him in the best 10 lap consecutive uh, average. You start talking 15, 20 laps out, top of the board. <laughs> Hear how smooth that is? Good smooth throttle transition into the corner. The car's stable. Got a good package. 
I love that though. Oh, pretty high. Oh, Chase oh, Elliott oh. around again in front of him. Oh. 360 keeps going. How about that, boys? That's what I'm well, talking you know, about. By third, by the third time, you got to figure it out. You just <laughs> spin around, keep on going. That's three times. Yeah. Here's a look at it. What the heck? I can understand spin out once, maybe even twice, but that's the third time. Cars just light on its feet, much like you see with Chastain, but obviously doesn't have the grip level he's looking for at all with that nine car. See him uh, get in the corner. He got in high though, guys. I, I'm going to tell you, I, I don't mean to critique that, but he got in too high in the fluff, and there wasn't anything bringing that thing back. Once his right side's got in that slick up there, that powder dust, you are in trouble. What do you call that? The fluff? The old fluff. <laughs> All the dust in the dirt that's not packed down. That's, that's exactly that's what it is. That's the fluff. <laughs> Six and a half minutes to go. Tyler Reddick still fastest. Here's how they put it together to build a dirt track at Bristol Motor Speedway above the existing concrete. As Daryl said, almost seven feet of it yeah. at mid track. And that uh, Tennessee clay comes from Bluff City, very next town to the south here. This is this will tell the tale. Watch Joe Logano's hands. Oh, as I say this, he Around spins, he out, goes. spins out on camera. That <laughs> is the commentator's curse right there. I am done talking about anybody, any one of my buddies out there. As soon as you mention their name, they spin. You kind of got blistered on that last week, didn't you? Horrible. Sorry, Joey. Set him up. A little of that, I think, was off of the car in front of him, having a little bit of trouble slipping up made him make an adjustment on his line his entrance spun out kept her going though pretty dusty out there right now but too. i want to go back to that four car and watching those in cars because i'm telling you the way his car is he has been the smoothest out there with the throttle there, and his the hands bottom. by far and above and by the way he's the fastest on the consecutive well he was following ricky stenhouse but he wasn't doing ricky stenhouse things yeah ricky was sliding there and looked like he was maybe going to back up, you know, and he made that adjustment trying to go up around him and got in the, the fluff and, and had trouble. Well, you know, maybe he came in, maybe they made an adjustment to the car, we'll go back out, see if it's any better or not, and I'd say he probably doesn't like that adjustment very much. Kurt Busch has the fifth fastest individual lap of this session. About two minutes to go in this session, then we're going to be off to Race Hub for 30 minutes, followed by Truck Series final practice and then Cup Series final practice. Watch his hands and listen to his throttle input on both both sides of that. What a wheel man working his tail off. Daniel Suarez jumped the cushion in two, got way up in the high stuff, came straight to the pits. Yep. Mike, I just really think a lot of these guys are experimenting. I think they're trying yeah. different lines, you know, high, real, real high, and just out of, out of the fluff, and, uh, you know, down around the bottom and see where the car will work. Well, this track is ever changing too. On dirt, that's the thing that you got to remember. As it dries out, that moisture content starts coming out of this racetrack. The groove will change. If you're not moving around and trying those different things, somebody's gonna somebody's gonna beat you to the punch and blow your doors off. Now watch the seven of Corey LaJoy. All the way up at the top of the racetrack, Christopher Bell in pursuit. But just look at the difference. It was the least little bit of a slip up with that right front tire. Got him high, got into that fluff, and he had to bail out of the gas. Christopher Bell went around him. Same thing just happened to Noah Gregson up there in turn yep. number two. Turn two is 
grabbing their attention, man. Now, I think there's two things going on. You're starting to see these guys run the middle of that racetrack, really blowing a lot of that dust, that powder up in front of those guys. And in doing that, they get into that where it was clean and slick and had good grip. They get on top of that, and it's like marbles. And a lot of that is coming from those guys running the middle, throwing that powder up in front of them. And a spinner in turn two puts an end to the session. That was Justin Haley. So Todd Reddick wins this first practice. Little track grooming in progress. There's your best 20 lap average in this session. Joey Logano, Austin Dillon, Ross Chastain, Brad Keselowski, Kurt Busch. As the track gets watered down for truck practice coming up. Regan, how about Austin Dillon, second in that 20 lap average? Mike, he was very good on that 20 lap average and long runs. Austin, is it as good in the car as it looks on the on the scoreboard? Yeah, yeah, we ran a lot of laps, our Bass Pro Shop Chevy, and, um, you know, it's it's been a fun um, experience again coming here to Bristol and running the dirt with this next-gen car. Drives a little different, but, you know, it's still dirt racing, and that's what I love about it. So we'll see what we can do. I think our car was, like you said, really good on the long run, had good forward drive. Um, I thought there at the end, you just saw some guys start to peek around the bottom and make some speed. So that's good to see. And because the top, it's going to be tough to, you know, get a guy out from under uh, running at the wall. So I think if the bottom comes in, we'll have a race. Mike, he was all smiles when he walked out of the holler. Good things for the three car down here. Yeah, very good on the long run. Todd Reddick, top of the board for fastest individual lap. What'd you think of this first practice? Well, I, I just thought that the, t the drivers were looking for places where their car was comfortable. Now they'll work on a little while. we got a break here, and then we'll, I think the next practice will really be more uh, more like what we'll see in the race tomorrow. I think all of them are trying to figure out how much. Look at that skid steer sliding down the hill. Whoa. Put too much water on there. That's why you need that soil conditioner. Chew that up. You can't just put water down on that. Chew that up a little bit. Condition that soil. Put some water down. Roll it in. Go, cat, go, baby. Here we are. Here we are. NASCAR race up coming up next, then truck series final practice, and we'll be back for final practice for the NASCAR Cup Series. Tyler Reddick, Chase Briscoe, Kyle Busch were the three fastest in this first round of practice. It's off to NASCAR race hub. Here's Caitlin Vinci. Thank you, Mike, and Cup Series practice just.